Welcome to a Pittsburgh Sports Nation sports update. This is Mike Draculich. Tonight at 7.08 p.m., the puck drops in the home opener for the 2-0 Pittsburgh Penguins, who face the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mark andre Fleury and James Reimer will be between the pipes. If last week's sold-out scrimmage held at Consul Energy Center is any indication of the level of excitement for hockey in Pittsburgh, you would be very well advised to arrive to tonight's game as early as you can. Gates open at 5 p.m., and the Pens are encouraging fans to be seated by 6.50 p.m. for a special pregame ceremony. In baseball, Bucko management couldn't have found anything humorous about Francisco Liriano's arm injury, as the broken bone in the left-handed pitcher's right arm is in fact his humorous, the bone in the upper arm that connects the shoulder to the bones in the forearm. Fox Sports reported Monday that the Pirates and Liriano agreed to terms on a new contract, replacing the original two-year $12.75 million deal agreed upon in late December. In Steelers news, the PG's Ed Bouchette reports that Steelers quarterback Charlie Batch is among five finalists for the Byron Wizard White Award, the highest honor handed out by the NFL Players Association. The NFL's union annually presents the award to a player who is as dedicated off the field as he is on it. Batch started the Best of the Batch Foundation based in his hometown of Homestead. It offers programs that directly impact youth, particularly in the Pittsburgh area. Other finalists are Chad Greenway of the Vikings, Charles Tillman of the Bears, Benjamin Watson of the Browns, and Jason Witten of the Cowboys. Coming up later in the Pittsburgh Sports Nation Sports Hour, Celebrity Clue, where you can add your favorite real people to the game in fun situations. My guess is someone will have Ray Lewis... With the knife in the alley. This has been a Pittsburgh Sports Nation Sports Update. Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Sports Nation Show with Mike Draculich. Right now, I'd like to get into Pitt basketball for a couple of minutes here. Pitt right now has a 16-4 and record. They are 4-3 and in Big East play. Two of those victories coming on the road at Georgetown and Villanova. That's two respectable road victories. But uh, if you look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology, Pitt is currently a nine seed, and uh, that is something they are not used to the past decade. Uh, they're used to being, you know, two, threes, and fours. So when you're a nine seed, uh, obviously you're playing an eight seed, and the winner of that game is going to be playing a one seed, which honestly, I think Pitt is talented, but really, in the second round, do you want to play, you know, a Duke or an Indiana? I don't, not yet. I think Pitt has the talent to match up with any team in this country, as was evident when they did play against Michigan. They had that team beat, and they just kind of kind of just didn't finish. They didn't, you know, do the little things in the end, like a, like maybe a, a, a completing a layup, like Steven Adams late in the game. Had, a, had pretty much a, an easy shot uh, inside, and he missed it. Uh, and then, not to mention, on the way back down the court, he failed to cover his guy, who hit a wide-open three, and uh, put Michigan back up by four, and uh, effectively uh, gave Michigan control of the game. Um, so, if you look at, at why Pitt, a 16-4 and four team with you know a pretty good reputation, is being put as a 9 seed, you can look no farther than their 0-3 record against the top 25 in the RPI. And, uh, you know... Maybe if Pitt would have played some better opponents uh, early in the season, uh, games against Oakland and Detroit and stuff like that, I mean, that's nice, a couple uh, couple games here and there. But, you know, in this day and age, and I, and I do realize that playing against the Big East, you're going to be playing against some great teams. But before you get into Big East play, and if you have a young team like Pitt does with you know James Robinson and Steven Adams, you got to get them prepared by playing at least you know a couple teams that bring out your best, or at least show you that what you're going to be seeing later in the season. Now, not all of this is Jamie Dixon's fault. Uh, Pitt did uh, uh, sort of get left out of the uh, Big East SEC Invitational, so uh, it was one game that you know could have been added to the, to the schedule that would have been uh, at least something respectable. Uh, but you know, still that that little tournament aside. Uh, Jamie Dixon from now on it needs to find games. Uh, maybe you know, be like Michigan State and Duke. You, you got a great program, and I, I think that the 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 quality opponent that you face early in the season will will be a measuring stick of what you're going to see later in the season. So you know, it, even if you lose, 
even if you go up to Michigan State and you get clubbed early in the, in the season, that's not going to have too much effect on you uh, come tournament time because you know by the time you get there, you'll know what it takes to win games. So in the future, you got ACC play coming up next year. Obviously, you have Duke, who's you know in the top five every year. North Carolina is in the top five every year. I mean, this year being an exception, as they're not having a very good year. But you know, the ACC, uh, along with Syracuse being in there now, and uh, Louisville is going to be entering there. It's it's going to be it's going to be you know even better than what we known what we've known uh, as Big East basketball for all these years. So early season. From now on, and uh, Pitt has the quality of players to be able to play these players now. It's not like Pitt is Providence or St. John's where they got to worry about rebounding. Right now, I would say Pitt is in the Pitt's in a spot where they can reload now. I mean, obviously they had one bad year last year after after a decade of excellence, but you know you had Ken Birch leaving uh, in midseason. You had Trey Woodall getting hurt, and the chemistry was just all mangled with, you know, the, the attitude of, like, Ashton Gibbs and stuff like that. So it was just one of those years where nothing went right, kind of like, what you know, what's happened like North Carolina and stuff like that. So everyone has those. It, it happens. But to prepare yourself for postseason play, you you got to test yourself early. And I realize that, you know, playing a couple cupcakes, you know, it's good. You get your reserves in. They get some time. They get to play. But you got to get out there and play somebody. And I don't care... Like I said, if you have to go on the road at Michigan State or Ohio State or wherever, uh, you know, if you could somehow get a one in one game, you know, you play a home and home, uh, that works out well. Or you know, schedule some games like you did against Michigan at MSG. That's that's great. That's something you want to do, and it gets your kids' attention early in the season because you know you get bored playing these little teams. I mean, you're beating them by thirty, forty points. I mean, what fun is that? You want a little bit of fear injected into your team when you play somebody. That way, uh, you know, when you do play someone like Michigan and they take a like a three- or four-point lead after you've had to lead the entire game, well, later in the season, that builds on you. You feel it. You know that, all right, I've been in this situation before, and we know we have the ability to come back. So that's something Pitt might want to look at, you know, coming up in the next couple of years to get themselves into a position where when they do play late season games in ACC tournament play and NCAA play, when they do finally break through to get to uh, the Elite Eight in, in the Final Four and God willing, a, a championship game, some early season games will have something to do with them being there. So, that's something to think about. Alright, that's all I got about pit basketball right now. We'll be back in a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> 